Hi there, are you looking to learn a little bit more about Carol or Whale Carousel Foraging? Well, you've come to the right place. This is an exclusive by Angelina Hadji. Unlike the title and cover photo might suggest, we will not be talking about killer whales riding horses around a carousel, though that would be a peculiar sight indeed. Then what, you ask? Stick around and you might just find out. Carousel foraging is a hunting strategy used by herring-eating killer whales in Norway and Iceland. It is a learned behavior that is required for survival and must be acquired at a young age. So what is this behavior and why is it called carousel foraging? Carousel foraging is a highly vocal feeding behavior where orcas swim uniformly around a school of herring with their white undersides towards the school. As the orcas continue to do this, they force the herring closer together and up towards the surface. The surface then acts as a barrier, preventing the herring from escaping. During this herding where herring become trapped, orcas are highly communicative, allowing them to pull the herring from depths as deep as 160 meters. As soon as they are in a tight ball against the surface, it becomes feeding time. Orcas take turns between catching herring and encircling herring, and often are responsible for their own catches. To do this, orcas use their tail sap, which you can think of as them rotating from a backward C to a forward C, using strong contractions in their musculature. This allows them to effectively swivel it over and slap the herring, where the direct contact between the herring and the fluke is the main cause of debilitation and stunning. As orcas increase in size and length, the size of their fluke also begins to increase. As the size of their fluke increases, they're able to achieve higher velocities and accelerations and effectively catch more prey. In addition to this, larger ones have bigger surface areas, allowing them to hit more herring at once. When the herring are stunned, the orcas proceed to eat them one by one. But why don't they just chase them? Can't they just catch the herring without their tail slaps? In short, no. It's best to think of their flukes like weapons. As orcas are very large, they cannot accelerate fast enough. Mobilizing a small portion allows them to do so. This is not unlike us using our elbows in fighting combat, where we accelerate them quickly to reach a high velocity, increasing the strike efficiency. Tail slaps also aid against the confusion effect of the schooled herring. As the herring are grouped together, it's difficult for the killer whales to differentiate between individual herrings. Instead, tail slaps allow them to target a dense region of herring over an individual herring, increasing their probability of success and decreasing their probability of missing. We still have much left to learn about carousel foraging behavior, but with increased technology, we are able to see better into the world of an orca than ever before. This will allow us to monitor for any adverse effects we are having on orca behavior and health and allow us to further determine possibilities for divergence between populations. We can further explore what's different between populations, groups, and individuals themselves. Through exploration of this topic, it was apparent that both hormonal signaling and neural signaling are both widely unexplored. Further studies should investigate this to uncover some of the underlying mechanisms that control this amazing behavior. There is still so much left to learn. Go out and explore! Thank you for watching and thank you to all the amazing researchers.